Hi, my name is Gordon Shields. I'm Commercial Marketing Manager for Ultra Low Temperature Freezers for Thermo Fisher Scientific. Today, I'm really excited to introduce some new improvements that we've made to our TSX line. These improvements are based on customer feedback, and there's three significant improvements that we're going to demonstrate. As we all know, ultra low temperature freezers are going to build up frost and ice just through normal use. Feedback we get from our customers, however, is if you can reduce the amount of frost and ice, that'll make our lives easier. And we've done just that with our new TSX design. So I'll open the door and point out the change that we've made is around what we call the perimeter heater. So we've added additional functionality to the perimeter heater that will help reduce the amount of frost and ice and make your lives a little bit easier. you do have the ability to increase or decrease the amount of heat applied to actually have an impact on how much frost or ice will build up. The way to do that is very simple. You're gonna go into the settings mode, right here, the little wheel. You'll notice there's an icon for heater mode. So I'll hit the heater mode. From the factory, the way this is coming in is in high performance mode. That's how it'll arrive from the factory. And the heater setting is at 40%. So that will apply a certain amount of heat to the perimeter to remove that frost. If you want to increase the amount of heat to be able to decrease the amount of frost and ice that builds up, it's just a matter of toggling. And you can see I can take that all the way up to 90%. So I can increase that heat. Now understand there is a trade-off. The more heat I apply to the perimeter, the more energy I use. It's not a lot, but it is a couple of kilowatt hour per day. So if energy usage and reduction is important, you want to keep that heater setting a little bit lower. If you want to maximize the amount of heat being applied to the perimeter, turn that up, then it's a matter of hitting save and you'll save that setting. You can also make adjustments in standard mode. Standard mode is a lower energy usage, but I can increase or decrease the amount of heat being applied in that mode as well. So I'll go back to high performance. I'll take it back down to factory setting hit save and okay, and then back to the home screen. One of the key areas of improvement that we've made to the units is Wi-Fi connectivity or connectivity to the cloud. We've done that through a combination of improvements to software, as well as relocating the dongle, the Wi-Fi dongle itself, to give better connectivity and better access to a Wi-Fi signal. To be able to put this Wi-Fi dongle in, I need to be able to mount it to the top of the unit. It doesn't come standard that way, so it's not damaged in shipment. Notice I'm on a very secure ladder to be able to get up high enough to get to the top of the door. I'm going to open up this USB port and then place the dongle inside, and it's as simple as that. Now, what we're gonna show you is how to install our new light bar kit for the TSX Ultra Low Temperature Freezers. This is a new exciting option that we have that provides a visual indication of alarm conditions on the new TSX units. First step is I'm going to unlatch the lower door. I've got a little wedge here, I'll just keep so that the door doesn't come back while I'm mounting the bar. I'm gonna remove the light bar from the packaging. So you can see how it looks here. There's also a set of fasteners in here that I wanna make sure that I have out and ready. The first step is I'm going to take off the cap. The reason I'm taking that cap off is so it, it eases the procedure of feeding this wire up through. Bring that through and up, and then I will replace the cap. Then I'm going to Use the thumb screw, locate the thumb screw hole, and then slightly loose, tighten that down. I'll need to just remove this filter and locate the hole on this side, feed it up through. Put the thumb screw on. Tighten that down. 
replace the cover. And then the last step is to connect. I'm going to remove the covering cap and I'm going to plug in until we hear it snap. Okay, now that the light bar is installed and the unit's powered up, I'm going to show you how to enable the lighting system. So it's simply a matter of going in on the display on the touch screen. You'll see what's the settings display. It looks like two little wheels. I'm going to hit that. Then I'm going to go to display. And then I'll need to toggle down. You notice here, I'm not seeing anything about LED lights. I will toggle down until I find LED lights. Notice here from the factory, it's disabled. I'm going to enable the system. You'll also see here that we have green, orange, and red. And I can turn any of those on. You would want to have all of them on. And we'll demonstrate how that works. If I hit save, you notice the green light has now come on. I'll save my settings. So the green light's on under normal conditions with no issues and no alarms. If I open the door, the unit will flash orange. So that's an indication that the door is open. If there's any other alarm condition, a minor alarm condition, it will light up orange. If there's an acute alarm condition, it will light up red. So notice I'll close the door and it will go back to green. The light bar accessory indicates visually what's going on with the unit. If the light bar is green, that means there's no system operating issue. So from a distance, you can see everything's okay. If, as we illustrated, we have a door opening, it will flash orange, and there are a number of other conditions that will create an orange light. Typically, those are conditions that indicate a potential future cargo risk, but not an immediate cargo risk. And these are things like failure to reach set point, maybe a compressor temperature that's getting too warm, could be an ambient temperature as well issue. Any of these will indicate an orange condition, and that means that at some point attention should be paid to the unit. Finally, if the unit is indicating a red light, that is an indication of immediate cargo risk and immediate attention needs to be paid. So it's an acute situation. And that would be things such as the door is left open and not closed for a period of time, a power failure, a compressor type failure. Any of those that could put the cargo at risk and immediate attention is needed is where you will see a red light and red alarm. Okay, let's recap on the improvements that we've made to the new TSX line. There are three key areas that we've made improvements on. The first is in Wi-Fi connectivity, cloud connectivity. And that's through the relocation of the dongle that we showed how to mount on the top of the unit. Also changes in the software that help the reliability and the connectivity. The second is the addition of perimeter heating around the perimeter, which helps to reduce the amount of frost and ice. It is adjustable, so you can actually adjust depending on energy usage, as well as the amount of frost and ice that you want to reduce. And then finally, the accessory, the light bar accessory, that's available on all the TSX units now. And that light bar easily mounts as we demonstrated, and it will show up green when the unit is fine. If I've got a door opening, it's going to flash orange. If there's a severe alarm condition, it will be red. So that now gives us a visual capability of seeing what's going on with the unit. And we're not just counting on the audible alarms on the unit. Thanks very much for your attention today.